Today on the newscast, a major Middle East story this week that you probably have not heard of, but it could end up making history. Find out what it is next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We had some major news out of the Middle East this week that the mainstream media largely ignored, but we have it for you today here on the Watchman Newscast. An online magazine called Breaking Defense had the scoop earlier this week that Saudi Arabia is considering buying missile defense systems from Israel. This is major news that could have historic implications. I do not say that lightly. According to this online magazine, Breaking Defense, the Saudis are considering purchasing Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system, which focuses mainly on intercepting short-range missiles, and also the Barak ER missile defense system, Israeli-made, which focuses on intercepting cruise missiles. Now, the deal is not finalized, but... Apparently, the Saudis and Israelis are having at least back-channel talks about making this a reality. And folks, when I say this is historic, I do not say that lightly. Number one, Saudi Arabia and Israel do not have official diplomatic relations uh, as of now. There have, of course, been rumblings that we've talked about a lot here on the newscast over the past year that perhaps the Saudis will join the Abraham Accords, that historic peace treaty that Israel has struck between uh, itself and Arab neighbors, Sunni Arab neighbors like the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, Morocco. By the way, we just passed on September 15th, Wednesday of this week, the one-year anniversary of the signing of the Abraham Accords at the White House under President Trump. I was honored to be in attendance. It was quite a day But I remember on that day, one year ago, that many of us were talking about, okay, who's next? Who will come into the fold next and come into the Abraham Accords agreement with Israel? And the big one we were all talking about was Saudi Arabia for obvious reasons. It is probably the most important place in Islam where Mecca and Medina, the two holy sites in Islam, are located. The Saudis see themselves as the guardians of Mecca and Medina. It is a pivotal country on many levels, to say the least. This is a start. The defense, security, and intelligence cooperation that Saudi Arabia and Israel have engaged in over the past few years. And we did have a meeting, reportedly a back-channel, in-person meeting back in November 2020 between the former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, also known as MBS. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was also present for those meetings. Former Trump administration officials that I have spoken to said, hey, if President Trump had a second term in office, the Saudis by now would have already come to the table and joined the Abraham Accords. But that is not the case. But still, perhaps the Saudis will eventually join the Abraham Accords, buying Israeli missile defense systems Potentially, again, it's not a done deal, but potentially, and even considering it, is a major step to my mind uh, in that direction because you know there would be backlash, of course, inside Saudi Arabia by some of the Saudi population uh, to this move. And of course, the neighbors, meaning the Iranian regime. You have the good neighbors and you have the bad actors in the region like Iran and its proxies would be furious over this and lash out at Saudi Arabia. More on that in a second. A little bit more backdrop to this potential. Again, key word there, Saudi purchase of Israeli missile defense systems. Remember, we reported here in the newscast earlier this week that the Biden administration has removed U.S. missile defense systems from Saudi Arabia. We had the Patriot missile batteries uh, stationed around the Saudi capital of Riyadh over the past few years, and now they have been removed by the United States. Now, they will say that Biden administration officials, that it's part of their pivot to counter the China and Russia threat. But you have to scratch your heads, folks, because at any time, there's been no time like the present for the Saudis to have missile defense. Why? We've been talking about this a lot, right? Over the past few months, the absolute onslaught by those Iran-backed Houthi rebels against Saudi Arabia in the form of attack drones and ballistic missiles, over 200 
40 attacks this year alone carried out by the Houthis against Saudi Arabia. Now, many times the Saudis will say, uh, hey, we shot down the drone or we shot down the missile, our missile defense systems. But for the U.S. to remove its highly advanced missile defense systems, to my mind, is obviously a blow to those Saudi defenses against this Houthi onslaught, an Iran-backed onslaught, by the way. So it's really no surprise in the grand scheme of things that Saudi Arabia is considering now purchasing some of the best technology there is, Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system and Israel's other missile defense systems. All of this that we're talking about today is part of what I call the Afghanistan effect. What is that? Well, the United States beat that hasty withdrawal, a disastrous, chaotic withdrawal, an absolute debacle uh, out of Afghanistan in the past few weeks, and it left a stain uh, on the United States' reputation in the eyes of the world under the Biden White House. Number one, our friends no longer believe they can trust us or count on us, and our adversaries no longer fear or respect us or respect any consequences for their bad behavior. So right now, the Saudis are feeling a bit nervous, without a doubt. And like Egypt, Jordan, the UAE, Bahrain, the Saudis look at the region. They scan what's going on in the Middle East right now, the world's most chaotic and volatile region, and they see Israel as the strong horse. They see Israel as the one nation that is willing to stand up to the Iranian regime and Iranian expansionism in the region. That's the major reason, really, for the Abraham Accords, that shared Iran threat. The Sunni Arab nations and Israel are both very wary of that Iranian arc that is stretching from Tehran across Iraq, Yemen, Syria, and Lebanon, not only at Israel's doorstep, but at Jordan's doorstep, uh, at Saudi Arabia's doorstep. And Egypt, I can tell you, Naftali Bennett, the Israeli prime minister, met with Egyptian President el-Sisi in recent days, and both of them were talking about not only the Iran nuclear threat, but continued Hamas terror out of Gaza, so shared threats across the board between the Sunni Arab nations and Israel. Saudi Arabia, Israel, hey, there may be a lot of differences, obviously, but they certainly share a growing concern over the budding Iranian Shia nuclear superpower to the east. So that's some of the backdrop and some of the dynamics going on right now. We will keep you posted if we hear anything about this, I encourage you to check out the article online. Again, it's an online magazine called Breaking Defense that focuses on security and defense issues. They had the scoop here. It was a very informative piece. I encourage you to check it out. And the mainstream media, uh, uh, surprise, surprise, not picking this up. But hey, that's why we do what we do. Because if Saudi Arabia is going to buy missile defense systems from Israel, that's kind of a big story, to say the least again, in the world's most pivotal region, because what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. It profoundly affects all of us, no matter where we live. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here this week on the Watchman Newscast. Have a great weekend. God bless you. Stay in prayer on all these issues. Until next time, remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.